Next on Worcester News Tonight, the city unveils its newest hotel, helping to answer a problem in the city. Plus, a campaign to keep city streets safe. The latest effort to reach both drivers and pedestrians in Worcester. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us. I'm Anna Botari. Economic development continues to surge in downtown Worcester. And tonight, the city celebrated the opening of its newest hotel. The Homewood Suites by Hilton will offer more than 100 new suites for visitors down on Washington Square. And the new building is set to help Worcester with its hotel occupancy problem. Our Cam Jandro now joins us live with more. Cam? Anna, during the week, it seems nearly impossible to book a hotel here in Worcester. And with, and with this problem continuing, the city is looking to accommodate it. A welcome sight for city manager Edward Augustus. A brand new hotel opens in the heart of downtown Worcester. My hotel occupancy rate as a city uh, is more than 90%. Typically in cities around the country, it's 60%. So it just shows that there's still a pent up need for additional hotel rooms. Earlier this year, the city's bid to host the NCAA tournament was denied due to a lack of full service hotels. Augustus believes building more hotels in the city will boost the local economy. You know, each hotel that we bring online helps us get closer to get bigger and bigger kind of events. And the more bigger events you get, not only the more hotel rooms you fill, the more money gets spent in the city of Worcester. According to the Worcester Regional Chamber of Commerce, hotel revenues have risen nearly 30% in the last year, but there are still simply not enough hotel rooms in the city. President and CEO of the First Bristol Corporation, Jim Karam, says demand played a part in their decision to build in Worcester. We thought it was an underserved market, and we thought the market was moving. I mean, sometimes you have an underserved market because the city is trending down. This was a place that was trending up. I think there are a lot of great things happening in this city. The new building on Washington Square offers 118 suites, bringing the city's total number of hotel rooms near 1,000, much to the delight of city and state leaders. People recognize that there's a lot happening here in the city, and we're really excited to see Worcester on the move and have such momentum. And really taking our rightful place as the second largest city in New England. We're, we're acting like it and we're looking like it. Now, Augustus says with the new Marriott opening in just a few months, the city will add another 125 rooms. And they said they've been in conversations with multiple developers looking to bring hotels here in Worcester. Anna. Thanks, Cam. Well, two Wachusett Regional High School students are arrested Wednesday after reports of threats made to the school. In a note sent home to parents, Wachusett's principal says there was a, quote, disturbing and threatening conversation between students on social media Tuesday night. Early this morning, police called for a shelter in place. School administration, state police and Holden police identified six persons of interest. As of this afternoon, two were arrested. Police did not identify the students. The school day did go on as scheduled. The investigation is ongoing, but police say there was a direct threat to the school. New information shows the Las Vegas shooter bought more than two dozen guns in the last year. Massachusetts has some of the nation's toughest laws in the country, but one gun shop owner tells us they don't have access to records showing specifically how many guns a customer has bought. It's part of an ongoing conversation nationwide. Our Catherine Andrioli has the story. And hundreds and hundreds of guns in collections. It's nothing unusual. Gun dealer Alicia Merritt says it's not uncommon for people to buy several guns at a time. It's the center of a national conversation after authorities say Las Vegas shooter Stephen Paddock purchased 33 guns in the matter of 12 months. We have recovered 23 firearms at Mandalay Bay and 19 firearms at his home in Mesquite. According to the ATF, the sale of two or more handguns must be reported if they occur at the same time or within five consecutive days of each other. It doesn't apply to rifles. The federal government has looked at this form. They have checked the background of this person via their name, their social security number, all the information that they provide on a 4473. Unlike Massachusetts, assault weapons are legal in Nevada and the state does not regulate machine capacity. How Paddock acquired the guns and how he passed background checks are being investigated. Metro and its partners have executed a search warrant at the home of Stephen Craig Paddock in Mesquite, Nevada. Detectives are combing through evidence to uncover the motive behind the shooting and any other pertinent information that will help shed light on this horrible event. 
Merritt says all the states comply with the same federal rules. The only reports they receive is if a gun was linked to a crime. They have no access to any purchase records. GICS calls, you answer all their questions. If they have a concern about something, they ask you the questions, you answer the questions. It's because uh, um, a firearm has possibly been used um, in a robbery um, or something like that. As a conversation about banning assault weapons continues, Merritt believes it's not the answer. I know in Massachusetts um, they're pretty restrictive and um, the state of Massachusetts knows how many guns you've bought. In Worcester, Catherine Andrioli, Worcester News Tonight. A Worcester man arrested Tuesday night after police broke up a fight at a gas station on Chandler Street. Police arrived at the BP gas station to discover 32-year-old Jonathan Vasquez Rodriguez squaring up with another man looking like they were about to fight. The other man was shirtless and had multiple slash wounds to his back and was bleeding from the back of his head. According to police, the victim had non-life-threatening injuries but was uncooperative. As for Vasquez Rodriguez, he's known to police and they say he's been told multiple times not to hang out by the BP property. He was arrested for trespassing. Wormtown Brewery in Worcester is expanding and utilizing more space at its Shrewsbury Street location. The taproom, brewery and offices use 9,000 square feet, but they recently tore down a wall, gaining an extra 14,000 square feet, which they'll use as a place to keg, can and bottle their beer. Head brewer Scott Drake says this expansion is a big deal and says they've been growing by more than 100% each year. The demand for our beer just isn't slowing down. So this is huge for us. It takes a lot of stress off of us as well. It's a little stressful now installing everything, but once it's running, it'll be so much smoother. We'll be able to put out more beer faster and even better quality. Wormtown is also expanding into more states. Drake tells us through a new partnership, they're set to open a new brew pub in Keene, New Hampshire. In over a week, hockey will be returning to Worcester. With the Railers gearing up for their inaugural season, logos from some of the Railers' sponsors were put on the rink and a fresh layer of ice was laid. The team's spokesman says they're busy getting ready for the last few things and they're ready to launch their team. Crew's been over here working hard to get the rink ready. You know, big, big thing right now is just getting the DCU center, getting the rink here and the ice ready. and. We're kind of, you know, tying up loose ends, getting uh, everything ready to go for October 14th against Manchester. The Railers wrapped up day three of training camp today at their Fidelity Bank Worcester Ice Center in the Canal District. The first game will be held Saturday, October 14th. The trial for a Massachusetts state trooper accused of assaulting on a man who led police on a two-state chase began this week. Joseph Flynn is on trial in a New Hampshire court for the 2016 incident. The 32-year-old trooper is facing two counts of simple assault by an on-duty officer. Prosecutors say he used excessive force while arresting Richard Simone. The Worcester man led police on an hour-long high-speed chase. Flynn's lawyer argues the trooper was using reasonable force to apprehend a dangerous and wanted felon. Flynn was one of two officers charged after the incident. He's on paid leave from the state police. Keeping drivers and pedestrians safe on city streets, it's the focus of a campaign being driven by Worcester City Manager, Police Chief and District Attorney. The effort starts right away. Our Brittany Schaefer has more. Well, as you can see, the efforts to enhance traffic safety are happening all over the city of Worcester with new crosswalk markings and pedestrian flashing signs. But now the city wants to take distracted driving a step further by launching an awareness campaign. It is an epidemic. City leaders agree distracted driving in Worcester needs to stop. It's why the city manager, police chief and Worcester County District Attorney are teaming together to focus on distracted drivers and pedestrians. Try and get the message out. It's got to stop. It's just, you know, getting worse. It's getting worse. Is your kid's life in the back seat of that car worth any text message you sent that day. The chief and the DA's effort, I'm hoping we're just going to continue to raise awareness. The goal is that the plan will reduce the number of accidents, number of injuries uh, to both pedestrians and drivers. According to police, officers responded to 13 pedestrian accidents in 2017 so far. One was fatal. City manager at Augustus wants those numbers to go down and there's a plan to improve traffic, pedestrian and bicycle safety on streets. When we're 
doing the streets, we're not just doing it with vehicles in mind, but we're doing it with all of the users of our streets and sidewalks in mind. Augusta says the city spends millions of dollars every year fixing and redesigning roads. He says this has been a big focus of his as city manager. We've done things that have tried to calm traffic, tried to reduce speeds in the city, using the infrastructure designed to try to accomplish those goals. People might have noticed in some of the streets that we have redesigned, uh, there are bump outs now. One possible option the city is looking into is changing the citywide speed limit from 35 to 25 miles per hour. Yeah, I'm not sure whether it's the right thing to do or not uh, right now. We're really looking at it and looking at it from all the different vantage points. There's more than 1,400 street signs that would have to be changed, uh, and that's no small cost. From improving streets to getting a message to drivers, District Attorney Joseph Early Jr. has talked about the dangers of texting and driving to teenagers for years. Now he says he wants to reach a larger audience. Working with the chief, working with the manager, we're going to put an all fronts push out. You know, it might be billboards, it might be some videotaping, but we've just got to get the message out. This has to stop. This is so dangerous. Now, Early says the first thing officers do when investigating a crash is to check cell phones to see if impaired driving was a factor. And he says one in four crashes today involves texting and driving. Brittany Schaefer, Worcester News Tonight. Future Worcester police officers are hitting the road this week. The city tweeting out this video earlier today. The Worcester Police Department recruits are set to graduate Friday. Today they did some physical training in front of City Hall and Chief Stephen Sargent stopped by to check out the new recruits.